terms of their movement. And we saw that that's really what kind of uh, brought them undone in game number one. Yep. Well, we shall see how this all goes for them. Looking forward to seeing some adaptation. Oh, look at this. Shu Shen on his Enchantress. He's a, he's a grandmaster. Love to see mm -hmm. it. Dude, actually, I, I just want to take a second to say that these, this team, Limit Gaming, having seen their growth, I mean, they're still not doing amazingly in the division right now, but the difference between now and a mere few months ago when they were playing, night and day. And they clearly are getting better as well. I cannot wait for them to make us all eat the words we've, uh, all the trash we've talked about them. In a year or two, they're going to come up and be like, ha, we remember, we were there. We heard we all these there. mean things you said. That was against Div 1 opponents, though, right? And they're still that at the bottom true. of Div 2. Yeah. That is true. That is true. So, you know, we, we see little things. Maybe they're just not being punished as much as the, the Div 1 teams were. But, you know, we saw then, like, one one simple mistake could still really just completely ruin what was a, a good first 30 or so minutes for them in game number one. Mm. Are they in game a position to make it any off. different, though, this time? Oh, well, they're about to get three bounty runes, so that's going to make it a lot better. That's a much better start to their proceedings. Okay. They also have some very strong lanes. Like, bottom lane is fairly strong. The Rubik Timber. Mid with Void Spirit, you know. Void Spirit just does Void Spirit things. Okay, maybe the top lane is not the strongest in the world, but, you know, it's slug. What can you do? We don't expect them to be strong in the laning phase. You've got an edge, though, right? Like, Angie is going to provide that extra layer of uh, strength for the lane. Uh, hmm. What do you think about Dolem already having the Helm of Iron will queued up against an Enchantress? Hmm. Honestly, I've been watching a lot of these, like, uh, Beast Monsters being countered, quote-unquote, by the Edge. And I feel you can still go the same build, provided you avoid going the core in lane. You just go core later on in the game, and then it doesn't really change all that much, given that you shouldn't really be expecting to play around where the Enchantress is past the laning phase anyway. So I'm okay with it. It's fine. But also, like, it's, it's either this or buy Vanguard early. And I guess he didn't want to buy Vanguard. Yeah. I mean, I guess my, my thing is, like, a lot of the times we see the Beastmaster rushing, like, the Drums of Slom, just because it's it's going to be probably pretty necessary going up against this Timber Sword just to have instances of magic damage coming through. And really, mm. they are kind of lacking it at this point. Basically, entirely physical outside of the Oracle and maybe a little bit from the Ember Spirit with the, uh, the Flame Guard. That's a very good point. They're certainly going to be lucky on that. And I suppose, that's, if you're Timber, what? Do you start maybe thinking about buying Pipe this game then? Uh, then they have zero magic SJ. damage and you're still a super tanky. SJ, about to be first blood. So maybe Ling Miao will use this bonus goal to say, you know what? Screw Pipe, dude. I'm just going to build Crimson God. And make sure that they have even less physical damage. So then I'll be even more protected. And he does indeed queue up a full Vanguard. I think it's totally fine, right? Like, his job is to be able to... We know that Holy Grail want to get aggressive with a lot of their, their pushing potential. You know, they've got a, a Beastmaster who's going this Helm of the Dominator. You've got a Klinks who've just off the back of a Solar Crest, plus the uh, Tar Bomb, like one point in the strafe, is able to take out towers almost solo. So you just need to be able to either stand in front of it or provide that similar sort of push on the other side of the map. And again, with how physical oriented they are, if he gets Vanguard, Plus, probably like two points in reactive armor, you're not killing this man. Hmm. Feels very immortal at that point in time. Lots of couriers being assassinated. Slot loses his courier. Oracle lost their courier. The Oracle one was also carrying a salve for Summer. So that one could potentially come back to bite them on the side of Holy Grail. And this mid lane, gosh. Woo! Spirit matchup. So exciting. Many Woo. things are going to happen here. I mean, it's we, we, we've come to expect it. I'm still really expecting the uh, the Void Spirit to lose slightly to the Ember. I wonder if it's going to come off the back of like, if they were able to give the first blood over. That's another courier sniped. If they were able to get the uh, the first blood over to the Timbersaw instead, just get him up into the components of that Vanguard a bit earlier on, then maybe you can enable the Rubik to make those rotations towards the mid lane. Maybe you start to build up some of those stacks and mm. uh, you know recover your own experience in that regard and secure the early power runes. But we'll, we'll see if he does opt to make that sort of movement, if he really does feel like the, uh, the Timbersaur is unkillable. Yeah. For now, he's just making sure to mess around with SJ's pull. 
top lane. Still just having Dolem and the crew just casually farming away. Dolem does have his helm now, so with this available, he didn't go into the Call of the Wild. DQQ can start leaving this lane. Like, Dolem, for the most part, should be A-OK. -okay. But I think they just want to get him to level 4, and then at that point, they'll be like, all right, buddy, you good. Time to go and secure some runes or something or stack some camps for DQQ. So I guess, like, one of the things, this might be a bit... Maybe it's even going to be a little bit slower of a game than I was expecting for Holy Grail, because, like, he's, again, he's committed for the Helm of the Iron Will. I think you could go the Helm of the Dominator, but you just can't be looking to play around this Enchantress. Uh, but you don't exactly have that counter anymore, right? The Enchantress level 20 talent doesn't... Uh, Enchant doesn't target Ancients anymore. That was removed yeah. in 7.33. So if he gets into the Helm of the Overlord, then obviously it's going to be this unpreventable source of pushing power. And again, you're, you're playing with an Alchemist, right? So he wants to be able to sit back and farm and be a little bit more passive as well. Yeah. Speaking of Alki, That's... down bottom, Summer, just doing his thing. One of the reasons in the draft why I thought that they would go for Alchemist, I'll, it, it looks, oh wait, he might actually be dead here. Uh, he's got about to get brought down. Leng Yao's gonna kill him. That does not feel good for the Alk. Dying to this Timber Soul, who already got the first blood. Now he gets an assist for this kill. His game just gets better and better. And early on, one of the ways I like seeing teams deal with Alchemist is to play just really... F either one, you do one of two things. You either end the game incredibly fast, or you continually hunt him. And with Void Spirit, Timber Soul, even Slark, you can hunt this hero in the jungle and actually kill him off reliably. I mean, even just the, the Enchantress as well, right? One of those heroes that could get away with being a little bit greedier. Of course, a few early, early points into the Impetus, just slowing him down with the Enchant so that the uh, the Timber's spells are going to be land at every single opportunity is going to be a really positive thing. Yeah. Talked about those power runes, though, and we're seeing a lot of support rotations. It's going to be bottom, and it's going to be denied away by CXK, actually. I think they were in a position for Chosen One to actually be the one to claim it, so it's going to deny it away from his teammate. But at least Chosen One hasn't died yet. He was uh, a level or so behind Gun in terms of experience, but mm. uh, really recovering past those early stages. And of course, playing underneath the tower as well is a, a pseudo counter to this Ember Spirit, who hasn't actually gone the slider fix maxed out. So a little, not really the most synergistic build, right? Mm. I'm just watching this bottom side. Yeah, they're about to kill Summer, or at least try to. The Enchantress will slow him down. CXK there with the body blocks. Dude, CXK Rubik. I'm telling you, man. They give the kill over towards this Rubik. Ling Yao was hoping for it, but what can you do? And that's Summer's second death already. And he hasn't also been able to reach level 6. So now that they've gotten this kill, it's classic Timber Gaming, my friend. We skip the tower, we secure the tier 1. And CXK, he's he evolved, Daynog. He's learned. He's downloaded the tech. He got the wisdom runes, and they set up a kill onto SJ. Oh, alrighty. Things starting hey. to look. Oh <laughs> no. Okay, never mind. Not everything can be perfect, but still, the early game for Limit Gaming much better than in game one. The movement was correct. You know, at least they've got that going for them. So the thing that I was talking about before was: uh, do, do you not find it as well a little bit odd that you know you've gone this flame guard maxed out? with that he had a Blightstone at the time, now you finished it into the Orb of Corrosion and you're not actually using the Slide of Fist to, you know, try to minimize the cooldown on that. I really feel like yeah. that's the way to be able to counter this Void Spirit and it just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, to be able to go these uh, this item build and this spell build in combination together. Mm. I really do like the Int of Void Spirit. I'm very much okay with the three points guard, but definitely do agree with you that the Corrosion probably wasn't going to be necessary the way he's built up. Might actually end up losing his life here as they do grab him with the Aether Remnant. CSK didn't trigger the Telekinesis, but Chosen One didn't want to have to blow both Astral Steps. And unless he does that, they did not have the damage. Uh, maybe he's thinking to himself, similar to what's happening. Okay, we'll talk about it in a sec. CSK dead in the river as a Rubik gets ran down by Khan. But he could be doing a similar thing to what the Beastmaster's doing saying that I'm going to go a particular skill build in the lane because I need it for the lane, but I'm, I'm planning to itemize in a different fashion. And it's anti-synergistic now, but provided I don't get punished early on, I'll get there. But sadly, he's getting punished now. Khan, almost dead in the mid lane, forced to pop an Invis June to survive. Thanks, we'll at least have the uh, 
the Oracle to be able to play around with. He's also got that arcane ring freshly picked up off of, I mean, look at this tempo. Woo. He really just is not contested at all. Yeah. Do you reckon he needs to go full Crimson Guard? I know it's good to be able to protect the rest of the team, but I really feel like you're in a position to be able to just take this game over yourself. You know, Vanguard means that no one can contest you in the lane, means that you can push down towers solo, and I really wouldn't mm. hate to see him just go more stuff to be able to enable the uh, the burst damage, like a Sanjan Yasha sort of style. Sorry, I definitely would like to see that. I imagine that there's one of two ways you can look at it, right? It's either we're doing that uh, to make sure that he's the one that effectively becomes a carry with this amazing start, or if I buy an early enough Crimson, uh, I can deny all their damage. Dolem might end up getting a kill onto Chosen One. Chosen One jumping away. He doesn't have another Astral Step though. So we'll end up dead to Garn and the Slide of Fist. Ember Spirit now has the three points into Slide of Fist. So we're getting a bit more value out of this orb. They're still sieging the tower though from Limit Gaming. How much damage can they do to Garn? He's actually taking quite a lot of punishment. Forced to Remnant away. It's a big pickup though on the Void Spirit. But it doesn't mean that they'll protect the tier 1 tower though, because the timber is a bit too strong. Maybe his thinking is that if I get Crimson Guard now, while Beastmaster has very low points into Call of the Wild, then the army really does nothing at the moment. Ember Spirit only gets damage from Slight. Alchemist is being shut down, so he's not going to have damage. But I do agree with you that I would like to see him also just uh, Amara it up, basically, with the timber. Yeah, I mean, the, the the issue that I see for them potentially having is that they won't have that burst to be able to find that pick off at the start of these fights because they've got save potential, right? You're, you're still playing against an Oracle at the end of the day. So if he's on point with his positioning and not dying off the back of like Timber just getting on top of you and blowing you up, you're going to have that false promise save. You're going to be able to get off the chemical rage. You're going to be able to remnant away on the Ember Spirit who, I mean, he's not having a horrible game. Like, he's 2-0-0-1 zero, and zero, one gun. He's 400 net worth ahead of the uh, the Void Spirit despite the fact mm. that they're playing two towers down at this point. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like this Timber, even though he's set up for greatness as he's having a great game so far, could be doing even more. The one uh, little piece of stick, or not stick, but Grace will give him is that he does have a slark in his team. So he wants to protect the squishy little fish. Alchemist, he doesn't have that kind of protection next to him at the moment. The TPs were streaming in, but right now he's all alone and he will end up killed off. That is a, another death, third one in this game for this Alchemist of Summer. And up until this game, he was undefeated. 3-0 and zero on this Alchemist in the division, but that might change in this series. Top lane though, slark. He has been forced to go into the Shadow Dance. Reinforcements from Limit Gaming. My goodness. Remember game one, Denog, where we're like, where are the boys? The boys are here now, my friend. Limit Gaming showing up everywhere together. Yeah, and no, it's something that specifically in the Chinese region as well, I've uh, been able to speak to a couple of the Malaysian players that play within the region. The big thing for them is just always having status to be able to respond to a lot of the aggression that's coming through from the other team. So that could be like not just throwing out spells willy-nilly, you know, always having mana to be able to freely join in to a lot of these team fights. And um, they made sure that they all had the TP scrolls available to be able to make that response even mm. though they were in a really good position to potentially it's take dead? a tier 2 tower bot. Yes, he is. Oh, my God. Dude, Leng Niao is... Yo, 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 yo. Can anybody in chat let me know? My outsiders from China enjoy us. Who would have ever thought that we'd see Leng Niao owning a game? He's 3-0 and 3 right now. And he is... Uh, he, he got the full Crimson, but he's still going to go for the Kaya Sanj, making sure that he can still scale. I mean, the game is going well enough for him right now, Dianog, that he might get both anyway and still be able to fulfill both roles in the fight. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to remember as well, Timbersaw, universal hero. So all the stats being provided by the Kaya Sanj is just going to enable you to, again, with that tankiness, you're not worried about the physical damage coming through. So you could just look to stand and right-click a tower, basically, with that yep. Vanguard. And eventually, he's probably going to get at least one more point into the reactive armor. Holy Grail right now. In a bit of an awkward position for themselves. On the back foot, still trying to find the necessary farm for this Alchemist. Somehow though, you know he died three times, still has his Radiance. It's uh, arriving at the moment. <laughs> oh, what a player, what a guy. Top lane, they are gonna go directly onto CXK. Beastmaster, happy to commit the primal role. And CXK knows that he's dead, could at least make them work for it a little bit. Tar Bomb gets thrown in. He should just get killed off. Slark can't really do too much about this. Really does feel like Holy Grail are about to flick the switch though, right? 
Helm of the Overlord just 400 gold away. Getting a kill onto the Rubik feels kind of nice. You've just got the Radiance on the Alchemist. If you could get at least the Yasha, then he could look to potentially, you know, farm a little bit more aggressively near the team when they're looking to ball up and make a few of these moves happen. And DQQ mm. as well. He's got the Solar Crest finished up too. Khan's actually almost solo killing Chosen One in the mid lane. What? We'll just zip Sorry. away. Y yeah. You're looking at that, uh, that yeah, feed on the left-hand side? It happens. Double yeah, damage and denied at the same time? Yeah. I've seen this happen. It's happened before, but lately in 7-3-3, this happens, I would say, every 7th or 8th game, this ends up happening. DQQ, the same guy that got the double damage, also pops a two-hero smoke. What a time to be alive. You know, it's actually so interesting to me that sometimes the best thing on Dota to do is literally nothing, and he just stood yep. there, just waiting, and it ended up being a very impactful play. Mm-hmm. They get the Wisdom Rune on the Beastmaster as well. He now has the Helm of the Overlord coming out to him. So, I mean, do they feel like they can respond to this Timbersaw? I'm not quite so sure. Like, Summer's got that Yasha coming out to him, but he needs it and probably is level 12 just to be able to survive and look to contest mm. into this Timber. It's still so much damage. He actually went away from the Kaya Sarge, just really looking to go all in on, I am going to live and you cannot deal with me, going for the mm. uh, the Lotus Orb on top of the additional armor, just to be able to start things off. So, you know, find him without any reactive armor stacks. He's still going to have that additional 10 armor from the plate mail. Scary, scary hero when given a start like this. Slark, just choosing to just jump forward, say, hey, I've got Agadim Scepter. And, and now we're going to have a demonstration of Leng Nao's tankiness. He's being sieged into right now. They're doing quite a lot. He's still living though. He's not dead just yet. Has Timber Chain away. Slark goes in onto the Ember Spirit and finally they kill off this Timber Saw. Where's the reinforcements though from Limit Gaming? This Void Spirit only now arriving to the fray. Chosen One looking for an angle for the jump. DQQ though waiting Invis just in case to spring a trap with the Solar Crest. And we'll end up, just end up with this Timber being dead. The really scary thing is that... Uh, the where's the team syndrome ended up happening again. And if the team was there, like how they tried to defend tier one earlier, I don't think the Timber dies. No, and uh, I mean, Oracle was just in a position to be able to get off five purifying flames as well. Like he did the most damage to the uh, the Timber Saw in that previous engagement. It really probably isn't the situation that you should put him into. I mean, this is the one of the downsides, right? Of going into this Lotus Orb build. If he has the additional stats as well, coming through from the, uh, the Kaya Sarge instead, Probably doesn't die either, just off the additional HP, off of the reduced uh, duration of that Primal Roar in onto him. It's just mm. these little things like that that add up. Mid lane, the damage is going to add up onto CXK, and that's going to lead to his death on the Rubik. They might still try to pursue further into the fight, though. As they are thinking about jumping back onto SJ, Chosen One able to mop him up. And they might as well get some bonus gold off of DQQ's of Skelly Dodgers. And Limit. It's not always going perfectly for them, but Leng now is still feeling like he can push things to the limit. They just gotten themselves a Echo Saber for the Slark. Can keep farming on the map, and overall, the game state, despite this Alchemist being able to nominally recover, yeah. I think still feels overall quite good for Limit Gaming. Love this movement down from them as well. Like, everyone TPs down here because the Slark made that previous movement, forced him to pop the Chemical Rage, so without the Alchemist there to be able to uh, to stand and defend with his very healthy amount of net worth, there's just nothing that's going to be able to stop them from taking this tier two tower, opening up the map. Mm. The good thing is, at least uh, Holy Grail, they're going to be able to respond by taking a tier one of their own. But, you know, against an Alchemist, you just got to try and limit the amount of space that he has to farm, enable uh, the spaces for Timbersaw to be able to just present himself because you're not going mm. to have those many avenues for TP responses now off the back of this, even taking away their outpost. Ooh. I also it's love just... how they changed up their approach on game one. You know, in game one, when they saw that trade happening top, they mounted a pseudo defense. This time around, they secured the tower. Sadly though, they're not going to be in position to try and contest this Roshan. DQQ has a Solar Crest, and they have the Inner Beast Aura, so they should be able to get through this, but it's taking a while. Summer will be deployed as well to assist in this effort. It is, and but I mean, they're, they're drawing on the map, like inside of the Ancient Camps area, as if, hey, this is where they're farming. Maybe now they've finally realized that it might be up top, but it's going to be too late. Like, any time that there's, like, one and a half creep waves hitting into a tier two mid tower and no one is farming it, you got to know that uh, they're taking something of pretty high value. And if you can't see them on the map, it's probably going to be Roshan. So with yeah. Summer TPing back here, though, they might be able to get a quick pick off and an outnumber once again. 
Ist doch mal ja, der kann auf Force das fight. Der also pulls it back the Ember Spirit. It's now 3v5. They come across the Oracle first. CJ or SJ about to die. Primal Roar was expended by Dolem, but even with the false promise on top of him, there's no way he survives this. Will get popped. The very least DQQ was able to skirt himself away to the north side. But good read on the map by Limit Gaming. Finding the pickoffs despite losing out on the ages. They might still be able to force out these waves yet again. It's like they will, but I mean, again, you gun isn't exactly like the beefiest guy for this mid, ladies. Gotta be very careful. The chosen one potentially able to get that kill off onto him, but he's got the remnant available. He's gonna put it away. Gun. Just gonna, they're gonna miss another Wister Brin, man. Oh my god. He's gosh. got vision off and he's like, thank you very much. Okay, but they're on the other side, right? So the, if they're still here in two minutes, they should be able to get the next one. But this is... Uh, uh, do we have a stat, maybe, production, on how many Wisdom Runes have been yoinked by Holy Grail? I'm gonna say 90% of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this top tower currently being sieged into a little bit by Limit Gaming. They give it up right now, just leaving this area of the map. Uh, we were speaking earlier potentially about a go time that might emerge from Holy Grail. Is that go time now? As bottom, Slock had a bead onto Summer, does have Aghanim Scepter, so pounce back up in a second, oh. but does give okay. up on the chase. Very surprising that he gave up on that chase, honestly. Did he... Could he still see him? I feel like if he still sees him, it's at the yes. very worst, at least just using the pounce to prevent a little bit of this Alchemist's movement. You don't need to necessarily commit onto the kill. Has chosen one in that mid lane should be fine despite getting the uh, the solar crest into him. Um, yeah. On your point, they got three minutes left on the Aegis, right? What is Alchemist got coming out to him now? BKB. All right, that's pretty big. And you're also 500 gold away from the pipe on the Beastmaster. I'm a little bit surprised that they actually mm, enabled him to still get one of these Helm of the Overlord creeps because Limit Gaming were playing inside of their ancient camp area. So the fact that they were able, mm. he was able to just get an ancient Black Dragon for free and they all just retreated away, uh, I, I think that's potentially a little bit of a misplay coming through there. And I mean, yeah. even if Beastmaster hits up onto his level 15, just that extra 10 inner beast attack speed uh, damage coming through, you could really just look mm. to stand behind this Alchemist and really let him go to work. Alchemist is still the network leader in the game, but that's Alchemist for you. Slark doing his best attempt to try and catch up. And that will obviously help if they can kill off Dolem. No way he can escape this though. Try out the Primal Roar. And he will get killed off. Len Yao gets the kill. And can they mop up the army? It's not an insignificant amount of gold. Uh, it'll just steal away, at least for now, the boar. Can they catch up to the Black Dragon? Might not be might not be worth it to make the full chase, honestly. I don't think it is. But the thing is, like, he's just going to farm with it if you uh, if you don't put a little bit of attention onto it. This is one of the key strengths of the Beastmaster. Even when you're in the grave, you could still look to continue the farm. He could even cut this top web if you really wanted to, just to enable that next push to come through. Because again, you've still got a minute and a half left on that Aegis. And by the time mm. he respawns Alchemist, he's probably going to have the Blick Dagger as well. So even more tools to be able to get onto the back line. I mean... It really is about just finding the Timbersaw at the start of these fights and making sure to just pop it. Because if he gets the Crimson Guard off, if he gets the Lotus, if he gets some of those reactive armor stacks, I really don't think he's dying. No. That was a, a bit of an anomaly previously where he was just left solo against three people without any form of resistance or stats at that point in time. And even then, nearly lived. Mm -hmm. So that's the really scary part about proceedings at the moment. There's the Blink Dagger for the Alchemist, and they're corralling towards the mid lane. So it should be a smoke attempt to go and find a fight. We have the Blink Stun from the Alchemist. We do not have the Blink Primal Roar, but we do have the access Shielding. to this Pipe of Insight. And someone's actually going to trigger the stun, throws Ooh, it in. Nice oh try. no, Chosen One! He just jumped onto Link now, turns it into a two-hero stun. Timbersaw now, going to be surrounded. Solar Crest was on him, but he does Timber Chain onto the high ground. Being chased in, though, by the rest of Holy Grail. They want the Timber kill, and they are going to find it. CXK, Summers wisely throws the unstable concoction at him as he ascertains they have an easy kill onto the Timber. His hunch is correct, sets up the second, and they find three overall here, Daynog. That was... You know, sometimes Dota just doesn't go your way, fam. How was Chosen One supposed to know that that exact moment the stun was coming? 
Yeah, I even tried to go for the Manta dodge and almost landed it as well, but uh, you know, it's slightly off the mark. And again, we we talk, we called it right. This was their big timing, and well, this is another timing that they're going to miss a Wisdom rune. It's going to be DQ oh my God. <laughs> picking it up. Ninety-five percent now. What are we thinking? Uh, something. Okay, we've seen them get one at least from Limit Gaming, right? Uh, yes. So I yeah, one. something like that. Something like ninety-five percent. Yeah. It's so valuable, man. What's the oh support levels? I mean, okay, this game, the support levels are much more apparent. Woo! Level nine. Slark is also right under vision right now. He needs to be careful. Dolem has primal roar. Dark Pact is gone. He might die here. There's the primal roar. There's the right click damage. And he is going to get taken away. Oh, no. From bad to worse. You lose three heroes on the other side of the map. Ooh. You know, at least A your Slark is farming. And to make it well. worse... They also inflict emotional damage by tipping him. Oof. That is the one thing that we really don't see in the China scene is a lot of tips coming through. You know, it's very much, you know, business. It, it is a business arrangement that happens between a lot of the players, you know. Mm -hmm. This is their livelihood, but, you know, a little bit of spice coming through there. Oh, no. Well, I suppose it was his Observe Award that led them to the kill, so allowed to feel a little bit fresh about himself at the moment. Sure. <laughs> well, tier two tower is gonna fall soon. I was about slug. to ask I mean... you about this. That like, MKB, this is over and above Scotty, over and above SNY, over and above BKB. The question I'm asking: Can Slark afford to not have any defensive items in this game? And we're gonna find out as he jumps in for a fight. And this is what I mean: He just gets touched, and he's at half health. Now Summer channeling the stun, throws it in onto CXK. They turn and finish off Shusheng. Now CXK is uh, certainly going to die here, trying his best to run away. And to be fair, as usual, making them work nice for try. it. But they are happy to do that work and they get the kill. And now some are triggering another stun, throwing it onto Leng Niao. There was a point in this game where this was the tankiest hero on the map. Doesn't seem to be that point anymore. The Slark, he's on the back lines trying to run interference himself as Jim well as Chosen One. There. And it seems like it was successful, but the Creep Wave is coming. They still have a Siege Wagon. They still want to go on the high ground here, Daynog. Although, distraction is being ran. Courier scouts the Slark. Summer really wants him. Throws in the stun. Gets Dark packed that out immediately, though. And Slark has honestly, between himself, Leng Miao, and Chosen One, they successfully distracted Holy Grail from pushing the high ground. I guess they're going to be happy enough just taking <clears throat> one of the last two tier two towers on the map. Just go for the easy stuff, right? Because I'm still worried about the potential to be able to take out this Timbersaw. Like, he does so much. He had full 30 stacks in uh, of reactive armor in that team fight. He looks to try and go in, but he actually misses the chain. Does miss the chain indeed. Has a Chakram, though, but they're just turning their attention onto him. Summer leaves him alone, though. Goes onto the Enchantress first instead. They want Xu Sheng, and they are going to get him. Gando fell so low. False Promise kept him up. Dolem throws the False Promise and the Primal Roar onto this Timber. So Timber still reaches to CJ SSJ. Can bring out this Oracle and kill him off. Sadly, Ooh. though, eventually he will end up dead. The additional stun onto Chosen One leads into him taking the damage that puts him over the edge. Slark needs so to escape. The limiting factor of the Timbersaw in that team fight was his mana. Like, he literally just could not spam out the Chakram. He couldn't spam out the Whirling Death. He just needed to sustain himself off that to make sure that he could get those timber chains back to safety and it meant that there wasn't really enough pressure in uh that he was committing out in terms of the damage output and you just see as soon as timber's dead they feel so safe being able to go up onto this high ground and that is the last glyph that they've got as well in terms of what's being refreshed they're still not going to contest onto the top side despite the fact that chemical rage okay they will they, they've got chemical rage back up timber's still dead for another five they don't have glyph this really feels like the time where you just put this game beyond any shadow of a doubt. Tier 3 tower taken right now. With all the respawns happening, Holy Grail considering beating a retreat here. They don't have an Aegis. The Alchemist, though, does have the AC, Power Treads, SNY, BKB Rad. So still very, very strong on the map. So they might decide to jump back in if they can find Vision. Maybe they so feel strong hard for enough now that they really just don't care about the Timbersaw, right? He doesn't have the Kaya Sanj. He's just got the Kaya component. So the damage output is there, but the survivability, not so much. Same sort of thing with the Slark as well. I guess with the Slark, I can a little bit understand his hesitance to going towards the Skadi just because it doesn't go through BKB anymore. But, mm. I mean, kind of have to have it. 
He kind of do. Oh my god, Summer jumping onto Leng Yao, and the Timber is dead. He does not have buyback. And that was the strongest hero on the map at the moment. So they've lost now two and a half lanes of racks. Slark jumps in, almost immediately gets killed off. Forced to run himself away. And uh, this, this MKB, the rationale is there, but what's the point of having all this damage if you can never actually reach the Alchemist to try and leverage it onto his body? Yeah, that, that's the, the difficult thing, right? Like, it's great if you're able to get in, but he's just not been able to up until this point in time. And they've been playing the divide and conquer game pretty well, not just in this game, but in the previous one too. So it really feels like Limit have not taken a full five-on-five -five fight. I feel like if they went it, maybe it's a little bit too late for it now, but, you know, in the past 10 minutes, if even one of those fights had been an even five-on-five, -five, they probably could have taken it with the W. <gasps> Wisdom rune number two. Let's go. <laughs> Yay. Well, unfortunately, it comes at a cost. Chosen one gets killed off next to the Radiant Roshan pit. But they did get a Wisdom rune. Hey, It's something. I mean, they're moving top, but Roshan's going to move in 15 seconds. Maybe they're just like, you know what? We can kill him. Let's see. Last time around, it took them forever to bring the big man down. This time they out. Got Solar Crest. They got all good. Solar Crest. Summer with the AC. In a beast aura, they have enough Get to kill cheese. him. They leave behind a cheese inside the pit. Somebody has to go back for it. Yeah, and now right. Beastmaster also has the drums of slum. So we have yeah. everything that we could possibly want on the Holy Grail lineup. The only thing missing, honestly, is maybe a bit more tank ability for the Ember Spirit. But he can just play the edges of the fight. He doesn't actually have to go in anymore. No, absolutely not. And he's got an Aghanim Scepter as well. So he can quickly get onto the back lines. He's also got the Greater Healing Lotus. Are they going for the uh, the block of cheese? That's what I want to know. He's got hmm. one Greater Lotus and they've got the cheese available, but probably not enough. It's still going to be a little I'm bit of time before they can it. decide to go for that. Have yet to also see it in a pro game. I must say I've built it myself in a game and it felt surprisingly underwhelming for the effort and Kerr to get it. Slock trying to jump onto yeah. Alchemist, but look what happens. DQQ. The support clinks is stronger than the Slock. And now Summer... Reaching forward for this Enchantress. Leng now can do nothing to help him out. Leng now actually gets wrought up by Dolme. That would lead into a Timber Sword being killed off. Slark doesn't have buyback. Ancient Timber do, however, even if they pop them to one end. Here they come for the second lane of Rax. They'll probably finish off the one that they started in middle to make it full megas. And Daynog, I am not seeing a way back here. And no to yep. limit gaming. GG, well played is called. They throw in the towel. And Holy Grail secure yet another series here in the division. They are now 3-0, feeling a very, very...